but we have seen matches where uh, there was previous experience and I think all of them lost. So, it, like theoretically, it would be an advantage, but for some reason it isn't today. Strange, isn't it? Because uh, we talked about this earlier on. It's very unusual for these athletes because they, when they're warming up, they're warming up a bus ride away. Yeah. Whereas normally they'll be warming up on a on a range that's right next door to the final. Exactly. Yeah. But there's no space for that since we're in a like little lovely town in Poland. So. Well. Everyone has now been presented to the crowd. Fish bumps between the two archers. Pleasantries over. Let the battle commence. So it's Pagnoni who will shoot first here in Legnica for the individual compound men's bronze medal. Shot. I think that might have a chance to still touch, but I'm not sure. Marked up as a 9 to start with. If it's touching the line, it could be upgraded to a 10. That one is just out. Confident in calling that. 9, Julian. Oh, I wonder if he's going to adjust the sight. Well, first blood to uh, Pagnoni, only by one. But saying that, Chef, the accuracy in this sport at the top end is so good, it's so consistent that actually one point can be a massive gap. Yeah, it could be. But one point is always that you can still overcome one point because it's possible that somebody will miss. Uh, but the closer you get towards the end of the match, uh, you don't want to be two points behind, for instance, because uh, the chances of somebody uh, missing the 10 ring twice in a row is really slim. Yeah, and that's you know, the fascinating part of this, because you talk, you talk about tactics. You can't have them, you just got to hit the centers so yeah. time and time again. You can't you take a risk, for example. No. Especially when it's wind still, there's no tactics whatsoever. If there's a little wind, you can at least speak about tactics in a way that you can wait for a wind gust to go away or that you can uh, pick the right moment to shoot. But now there's no wind, then there's no tactics. You just have to bring your A game. Yeah, a little weather uh, caption that comes up. Actually, I think it was saying somewhere around about 4.6 meters per second wind, but... Not I'm, not, I'm not sure where that wind vane is because uh, there's absolutely no wind here at all. No, you can see the flags moving slightly, but that's... Might as well be someone breathing against it. A great shot from an Italian. There's a slight difference in style where um, Delos is uh, hanging a bit into the shot and he looks really relaxed when he's in full draw. Oh, it's just out. Well, it's just in sight, everything drifting off to the left, ever so slightly. 
but then Fagnoni, he looks really tensed. Si, as he uses uses all of his muscles to get them in the extra. But it's, it's, working. it's working very well. A perfect score for Federico Pagnoni. Long conversation with his coach there. Less words between Pierre Julien Deloche and his coach. Pierre Julien's coach is actually his former teammate because they used to shoot together. Well, certainly bags of uh, experience between the two. Yeah, then I'm you sure they know what to say against each other at any given moment. Get a good view of uh, Agnelli's uh, bow there. You could see, you were saying earlier on, Chef, that the the wheels, the cogs, the cabs, the cabs uh, are not uh, spherical. They're not round. They're yeah. actually slightly, uh, yeah. slightly oblong. Uh, not oblong, uh, oval. Yeah, so that if you draw it back there is a certain draw curve that makes it uh, lighter to hold uh, when you're full draw. Well, drawing first here is the trailing athlete uh, from France, Pierre Julien Deloche. Drawing twice actually because his arrow fell off his wrist. Okay. Doesn't bother. J change Deloche. He's just shoots, so so he's forcing them in the middle. He's not looking at him, is he? Starting to show some emotion. Federico yeah. Pagnoni has dropped incredible. one point, yeah. and it was the very first arrow that yeah. went into the nine. That's probably less than a mil between the line okay. and his arrow. His group is incredible. I'd say give it maybe one or two kicks uh, down the side, and then he would be absolutely centered. Si, toca, toca, grande. Another perfect score for the Italian. The thing is, all of the, the archers that are shooting in these final matches can potentially do this, can do what Pagnoni uh, is doing, because they're all this good. Uh, the thing is to do it on a moment like this, uh, where a medal is at stake, that's really impressive. And to keep it together at a moment like this, that's, uh, that's what it's about. And it, is, it is phenomenal to see well, obviously you've got to shoot well consistently and you've got to shoot well all week I think a lot of people yeah. you know when they're tuning in to watch this they just think oh they just go out there and shoot 15 hours and that's it you're yeah. done dusted but they're here all week qualifying going through uh, the, ra the ranking round first uh, and then going up against head-to-heads uh, -head throughout the tournament yeah BJ Shaw six matches before this one to get here and Federico shot five because he had a slightly better ranking. Yeah, got a buy through the first round. So Talosh still trailing, so he will still shoot first. And he needs to start trying to close this gap up. Yes. And two things need to happen for him to do that. He needs to start shooting better. And don't get me wrong, I wish I could shoot nines regularly like he is, uh, but he needs to shoot better and he needs this man to start dropping points. And he's showing no sign of that at the moment. There's no remorse. <laughs> Just remarkable. Okay, it's... So can 
and nearly make it three perfect scores in a row. Yeah, don't ever forget it, fellow. Yeah, that's definitely it. There you go. He's a bit, he wasn't happy about the last shot, but still in. Well, 11 tens in a row is quite remarkable shooting. And uh, despite Pierre Julien Delos shooting 29 out of 30, which is a great score, he's dropped another point. And he seems like he almost expected to go onto the field and just grab the bronze and go away again. He's really confident. Also, the way he shoots, he just pulls back his bow and casually shoots a 10 and then goes on to the next one. He doesn't waste too much time thinking about it. No, he's looking very relaxed indeed. And uh, he's definitely got one hand on that bronze medal. All he needs to do at this point is just shoot three goals. That's good. It's all done. It's all done and dusted. And it doesn't matter what Pierre Julien Deloche does. But I'm sure he wants to maintain his good grouping. Well, all he can do is uh, put the pressure on Pagnoni. Yeah, but he's a bit unlucky with his leg resistance. Well, if, if I was Pagnoni, I'd be asking for that uh, target at the end of this match. Yeah, I'm sure his, uh, his agent will bring it for him because this is an amazing group. <laughs> Slightly longer hold. It's a bit low, but still in. Still in. Yeah. This is some stunning shooting we're seeing from the Italian. Well, a 144 is not a bad score. But Pagnoni, well, he's been super special here. And there you go, another one to finish it off, and that's four perfect tens, and a 29 in the first end, and he has waltzed away with the bronze medal here in the men's individual compound event. Have you ever seen shooting that consistent in a medal match? I have, but not from him. <laughs> it's just incredible, incredible that he was able to hit the first one as a nine, yeah. and then tens right the way throughout. In all fairness, the first one was a 9.999. <laughs> I mean, it was so close to the line that uh, I was almost calling it a 10, but yeah, he just kept on. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you look at that, at that stage, the target was uh, well, pretty unremarkable. It's yeah. when we get into the fourth and fifth ends, when you see all the holes from the previous arrows inside that ten ring, apart from one. Just kept nailing it. Remember, 50 meters away, and he's... Well, he's not hitting something the size of an apple. He's hitting something the size of a golf ball. Yeah, I think consistently. His, his group, all of the arrows of his group fit in a circle of seven centimeters from 50 meters. So that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Incredible stuff. Federico Pagnoni will be on the podium a little bit later on today. And guess what, chef? The umbrellas are back out. <laughs> 